WOCA. Ocala. Five minutes after nine o'clock, beautiful Thursday morning. It's time for Veterans News, and Hank Whittier is in the studio. I'm here, and uh, the doc is not here. <laughs> He's coming in the door. Oh, there I wanted is. to say there that. Yeah. What's this for? I'm handed. <laughs> oh, the, oh, hey, they, they are here. Yeah, we, got, we got Dr. Knapp coming in this morning. Good morning, everybody. a few everybody. more Thanks chairs after all. <laughs> tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, we got, uh, we're going to have some guests today. Basically, Dr. Knapp and some of his staff from the VA are going to talk about a couple of issues and enrollment and a few other things. So, um, But as we do every Thursday morning, uh, and we'll continue to do for the, at least as long as I'm around here, uh, we do have casualties, and we're going to go ahead and start the casualty list in just a sec. Hey, Doc, how you doing? Hey, good. Okay. So you brought a lot of folks with you today, yeah. huh? All right, good. Anyway, are you anybody on the line? Because there are some firefighters, and there are some... Um, Nobody's on line this morning. So it might be a little early for them. Maybe we're going to wake them up. I, I guess what, you know, what Brian brought bagels last week doesn't think he has to call in anymore. <laughs> he's trying to make an excuse i think you know those guys are like me they don't they really don't like calling in because if they call in and they got casualties mm. so uh, but in any case we have some military casualties as we do well have. so hey girls how you doing ladies girls. <laughs> girls. i was talking to you <laughs> hey girl <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll okay. Have to be anyway. in about five minutes. <laughs> None of us will be able to leave. They'll lock the door. Okay. okay. Uh, we have order come to be that better little. Oh, yeah. I'm doing good. Yeah. We're just getting people Thank moved you. in, and all like folks, this. just bear with us just for a few minutes. You were telling me about these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Well, I've been, I've been bragging. Yeah. yeah. Again. Hi. How are you? Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go into our casualty list now. And um, Rob, I want you start it off. And if, if the fire department and police department don't call in, we'll share a support. Okay. We'll go ahead and read them as well. I'll go ahead and start out with the Army casualties from the Department of Defense. Listing Specialist Andrew H. Sipes, 22, Cary, North Carolina, died January 17th in Kandahar City, Kandahar, Providence, Afghanistan from non-combat related incidents uh, currently under investigation. He was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 1st Cavalry Division out of Fort Hood, Texas. Also is a Chief Warrant Officer, Edward Ball, Bali, 42 of Montgomery, California, died January 20th in Kandahar, Providence, Afghanistan. His wounds were from small arms fire when he was attacked by insurgents. He was assigned to headquarters and headquarters troop, 2nd Cavalry Regiment, U.S. Army Europe, Balslick, Germany. And uh, another Army casualty, a couple of them. Uh, they pa died on January 10th in Bargain Airfield, in Afghanistan of injuries sustained when the aircraft they were aboard crashed. The incident is under investigation. Chief Warrant Officer Andrew L. McAdams, 27, Cheyenne, Wyoming, assigned to Detachment 53, Operation Support, Airlift Command, Joint Force, Headquarters, Wyoming Army National Guard, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and Sergeant Drew M. Scobie, 25 of Kalua, Hawaii, uh, assigned to headquarters and headquarters battalion, 1st Battalion, 487th Field Artillery, out of uh, Hawaii Army National Guard, Oahu, Hawaii. Also identified as Sergeant Daniel T. Lee, 28, Crossville, Tennessee, Died on January 15th and in Afghanistan from wounds suffered when enemy forces attacked his unit with small arms fire during combat operations. 
He was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Special Forces Group, Airborne, out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Those are the military, sir. Sorry, they haven't called in yet, so maybe they're hung up or didn't get the emails or something. They've been busy running this morning, sir, with all the fires. What you doing? Uh, start out with the fire department. James C. Correction, James Doc Delbert Brooks, firefighter EMT, 62 years of age, 20 years of service. Date of death was 115 of 20, uh, 2014. Out of Prince George Fire Department, EMS, Largo, Maryland. Uh, while winterizing boats in a station at Fort Washington uh, Marina, firefighter books began to experience difficulties breathing and succumbed to a heart attack. He was transported and pronounced at that time. Also is a Greg... Hennessy, fire engineer, 49, 24 years of service. Date of death was 1 20, 2014. And Orange County Fire Authority Fire Station number 45, Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Uh, he was also involved in a life saving operation, uh, transported to Hennessy, and he was also pronounced dead on arrival from a heart attack. And then we go to the officers down from law enforcement. We have two of them, starting out Detective Sergeant Tom Smith, Bay Area Rapid Transit Police Department, California. His end of watch was Tuesday, January the 21st of 2014. He was 42 years of age, to her duty were 20 years. Uh, he was shot in was accidentally shot and killed by another officer while conducting a probation check and warranty service at an apartment in uh, Dublin, California. Sergeant Smith was uh, served with the Bark Police Department for 20 years and he survived by a wife. Also uh, serves with the department and his six-year-old daughter. Another one is Carlos Rivera Vega, Puerto Rico Police Department, Puerto Rico. 32 years of age, to her duty 14 years. Agent Carlos Rivera Viega succumbed to gunshot wounds sustained seven days earlier in an unprovoked attack while conducting an investigation. He is survived by a wife and two children. And those are your... Yeah, too many, too uh, many casualties. <clears throat> uh, that, no, anybody local? Nobody wants to talk about anybody local. I don't have anybody local at this time. I, I'm trying to confirm, but, but not at this time. Thank you. Okay. All right. That's I think all. You, talk, you probably get the same one in mind that I have, but we'll talk about it next week. Um, Larry. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that
going to go ahead and do a, you know, talk about Chevy for just a second because, you know, they, they make it all possible, right? You mean Palm Chevy Chevrolet and, and Palm Kia? Kia? Yeah. Located right here Three on the ladies right here are going to buy a new car today. <laughs> they are. Today. Fantastic. I hope that you're going to go down to the Chevy Corvette. They get a discount because they're, they're good looking. You're starting it now. Is she going to get one of the new Chevy Equinox? Just, just, let, be gone. just let me smell the leather. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the people down there at uh, Palm Kia in uh Palm Chevrolet are most happy to have you come down and view their vehicles and decide if you want to have one of their pre-owned or uh, a brand new Chevrolet or Kia. So please uh, take the time to go down there. They got a fantastic service department, and the people there are nice and friendly. Where are they? They're at, on State Road 200 here in Ocala at Palm Chevrolet and Palm Kia. Can't miss it. Okay, you can't. And you're in the market for a, a car, too. Possibly. <laughs> Not yet. Possibly. I'm going to see how well they do on the Equinox for me. Yeah. Corvette for me. <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> it's, called, it's called, you know, yours is called die cast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. About eight inches long, six inches long, something like that. I don't know. Anybody, any quick announcements? Because I want to get Dr. Knapp and his staff on, and they got a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I always have some announcements because the Brady One's Post 793 is still in, in, the, in the process of trying to build that $1.3 million uh, building out there that's going to be the community center slash post home. And this is an effort to do that there because we're having a tour of the Holy Land down in Orlando, Florida. The event date is to take place on February the 20th and the leave time is 8 a.m. from the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church parking lot which is located at 55 Southwest 3rd Avenue. And the ticket deadline is February the 5th. Ticket cost is for an adult which is 13 and above, $50. For a, a ticket for a child 12 and below is $40. And this ticket cost includes admission to the Holy Land, round trip transportation, and a continental breakfast. Uh, deadline for the ticket purchase is February the 5th, 2014. Uh, contact persons is myself, and you can call me at 629-4285, and the telephone answers itself at, at, at the fourth ring. So just say ticket information, please, and just leave your name and your telephone number, which is automatically registered, and I will get back with you. And my cell number is 352-817-1654. Or you can contact Comrade Ernestine Porter. Her number is 352-629-1668. Or you can send your check and money order for the amount of tickets that you would des desire to purchase to VFW Post 7193, P.O. Box 6413. That's VFW Post 7193, P.O. Box 6413, Ocala, Florida, 34471. And we'll be glad to assist you in your ticket purchases. And please remember, it's a trip to the Holy Land in Orlando, Florida. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a couple announcements I want to make. Hey, Hank, we were remiss in uh, not mentioning uh, uh, Tita uh, Cartagena and Gloria Cartagena from Citrus uh, Springs. They were volunteers at our event. And uh, I'm not sure we sent them a letter or thank them. I don't know. You need a but I want to take this opportunity to thank right. them because I'm sure they're if listening. If you need us to send something out, give me their address. I sure will. And, yeah. and uh, another one, uh, we have a Jack Madden, a 14-year veteran of the NBA referee, <clears throat> who's going to be on our show. Well, we need to come up with a date, but, you know, I told you, I, st I still hold it against Jack for tossing Bill Russell out of the game. Yeah, well, okay. uh, he also tossed his coach out, uh, Red Arbach. <laughs> so he's sure, not, I'm sure he regrets doing that now. Yeah, he's not very happy. <laughs> uh, Boston still isn't happy. No, and, and, you know, we're, we're known to hold a grudge, right? But they're great supporters of the veterans, uh, helping yeah. veterans yeah. organizations. Well, he's, so. uh, you know, those of you who don't know basketball, he was a very well-known referee. And he had it right when he called them on behalf of the Celtics, and he got them all wrong when he called it against them. Just imagine your very first game, a referee in, in Boston, very first time 
he throws out Bill Russell <laughs> and Red Harbuck. And he says ever since then, like for 14 years, they would throw stuff at oh, him. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> they know, never I, forgave him. I, to, I don't want to break the news, but Whitey Bulger is still looking for him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, interview him, huh? Yeah, he wants to interview Jack. Oh, wow. All right, listen, we're going to get uh, Dr. Knapp. As you know, Dr. Knapp is with the VA. He's the clinic director here in town. Uh, you know, good guy. Looks after veterans, and he's brought three of his staff members with him here today. He's going to introduce them, and um, three of his best staff members, by the way. Uh, well, before you get to uh, Dr. Knapp and all, I'd like to remind people that we, you and myself and the rest of these guys here, are all with Veterans Helping Veterans, and you can come to our office at uh, 1527 Northeast 8th Avenue. And if you don't want to come by, give us a call at 433-2320. We'd be happy to help you and see what we can do to help you in many yeah. ways. You can do that, or you can come by with your check, too, if you yeah, like. Yeah, we'd that. love to have right. that. We don't mind you doing we, that. We need yeah. that very much. These three anyway. ladies never come by the office. He comes by all, Dr. Knapp mm. comes by all the time. Well, we like to see Dr. Knapp walk in, too. Yeah. <laughs> right. But he, sometimes he does, I agree. Sometimes <laughs> but, uh, he does bring checks. That's I right. just want to remind people that we are a good organization to work with, and Dr. Knapp is going to fortify that by working with us through the VA. Very good. Look, look. Uh, he's got a lot to cover. He's got a lot of things I asked him to talk about this morning. He's brought some help. So uh, other than the commercial break after the, Larry has to take a break, it's all yours, Doc. Thank appreciate you. appreciate your coming, guys. Well, thank you. It's our pleasure to support Vets Helping Vets and this radio station. I brought uh, three of our best employees, not only in o from Ocala, but in the entire VA system. And our <clears throat> what we wanted to talk about today was hypertension and enrollment. Um, we, uh, we've added uh, 25 staff in the last year, and we just added a new physician. And uh, so we're enrolling uh, well over 100 veterans per month, and uh, we want to start with that. I brought to Shannon McNeil, who's our administrative officer from the clinic. Uh, Cynthia Ramos, who's our enrollment clerk, and she's, uh, she's uh, in the reserves right now. And Dr. Sharla Gary, who's our pharmacist. Uh, a clinic our size is entitled to three or four pharmacists, and because we have no place to put them until we expand, uh, Dr. Gary does the work of three or four people. So uh, she's going to talk about hypertension today. But let's start with, uh, let's start with enrollment. Um, since uh, we would like to increase our enrollment and have more veterans that are not enrolled in the clinic enroll, let's talk about what it, uh, how, you, how you would enroll. If you're listening on the radio today and you don't, belong, you don't come to the VA, but you're entitled to come, uh, what would we do to get you enrolled in the VA? Cynthia, want to start with that and tell us a little bit? Okay. Uh, there is, there's a... There is an application process. Um, if you come down to the clinic, just have with you to make it easier, have with you um, your DD-214, your driver's license or picture ID and your social security card. It also would be helpful if you have with you access to your previous year's income because the VA does have an income threshold, but don't be discouraged by hearing that. Just bring it down to me and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll start the process. So you don't need an appointment. You would just come down with your information. As it stands right now, I don't take appointments. Just come on in. Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30. Well, that's very good. What about new patient enrollment? As far mm -hmm. as? Yeah, we, have, uh, we have a system where uh, you would then uh, refer them to new patient enrollment. So for a few hours, we would actually give everyone an orientation on what's available. Well, yes. The way that it starts, I mean, initially <laughs> what you would have to go through is a lab and a new patient orientation that lasts about an hour. Mm -hmm. And then you would come back a, a few days later to, see, to actually see your provider. And then the orientation, it kind of just goes, what I tell the veteran is that it goes, it, it goes over your responsibilities with the VA and our responsibilities in taking care of you as a veteran. Very good. Now, I know we don't have a waiting list, but uh, up until uh, hiring a new doctor, there is, a, there is a time lag to get in. What is our time lag at the present time to get in? New patient appointments I'm actually scheduling into the end of March. Okay, so right now we're about, uh, I have a timeline of about eight weeks, but I, I will tell everybody out there who's listening, we just hired a, an excellent new physician, and uh, we're, we're uh, committed to getting that down to uh, just a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Shannon, do you have anything to add about? Uh um, no, I don't have anything to add. Good morning. Just 
you can always call Cynthia in her office if you you know before you come by and it's um 352-369-1328 and just give her a call and sometimes she can tell you what's the best time to come by and see or like come right now or she'll work with you and you can also register online I think it's go to www.va.gov and they'll have a link where you can go and you can also register online. It's an online registration process. So if you're tech savvy and like the computer, give it a try and and you just I know it's a place on there where you just check Ocala and Miss Ramo, she'll get a hold of your application or Miss Morris and we'll get you set up and if they have any questions, they'll call you and you just leave your telephone number on that online application. Shannon, if I, can, I don't have my DD-214, can I show up, or what am I supposed to do if I, don't, if I can't find it? Yes, you show up without your DD-214, and there is a process where Ms. Ramos can go through the Health Eligibility Center in Atlanta, Georgia, and she can get that for you. Can she, can't get it, she can't get the actual DD-214, right. but she can verify your service time. But I would also recommend, if you don't have a DD-214, go down to Marion County Veteran Services and apply for one, because it's good for you to just to have for yourself, for benefits, you know, kind of a, in the long run. I see everybody shaking their head, and uh, that's exactly right. If, uh, if uh, you're listening and you don't come to the VA, in the future, if you, you may need hearing aids. Mm -hmm. You may need uh, glasses, eye exams. We specialize in that. We specialize in mental health. And last uh, month when we were on, we talked about our diabetic classes and starting uh, veterans on insulin. And we're going to talk about our hypertension uh, classes and what we have to offer because the VA really has expanded their services, and we're really proud of what we have to offer here. Doctor, would you like to take phone calls? Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, just let me invite the listeners, if you want to call and ask questions, the number is 622-9622. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622. You do have a caller, and you'll need your headphones to be able to hear the caller. So let me give you a chance to put the headphones on. And the volume control is at the other end of the wire. Just, just <laughs> tra trace, yeah, trace the wire from the headphones, and you'll find the volume control. All right. You ready? All right, here we go. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting for us. You're on the air now. Hi. This is Maria in Spar, and um, I would like to know, um, I don't, we don't mind helping uh, the veterans locally here in our area in Spar, but I would like to know, uh, sometimes they want us to help them with their financial things, uh, business, and my husband and I don't want to get involved in that, you know, so is there any outlet in the veterans, you know, association where we could direct them to? Well, I would like, uh, this is Robert, uh, I'm the office manager for Veterans Hi, Helping Bob, Veterans. You, Hello. Uh, direct them to our office. They're at 1527 Northeast 8th Avenue. We're okay. kind of a clearinghouse for a lot of veteran organizations, and we're able to put together possible financial assistance in various manners and ways. Okay. okay. And yes, uh, we just don't really want to know about, you know, their financial no, business. I mean, we help them if they need food. We'd rather they that they communicate with us because uh, we deal uh, constantly with the HIPAA laws, and Good. both the VA and us work extremely well with patients or veterans of that level. Okay, that's good. My husband's taken down a gentleman today for his orientation class. Well, fantastic, ma'am. Who's a Korean veteran. Yes, ma'am. You know, so he's bringing him down uh, today. They're going to go to lunch, and then they're going to go to the vets for their orientation. We get a lot of people in. Go ahead, Curly. I'm going to ask him, is he a veteran himself, ma'am? Uh, yes. He's and is from, he a, is he a, a member, Korean veteran. Is he a member of VFW? Um. I don't believe so. Okay, I was just going to suggest his, that if he's a member of VFW, that can count towards his uh, VFW activities as as a. Oh, okay. You know, and, and, and he gets points and and also gets um, help from his VFW as as to um, his activities, and that can count towards some points as far as the VFW state level, uh, just okay. by helping another veteran get to where he's going and how all that stuff. That that is, you know, it's just a little something something that you can throw in towards the. The VFW state awards and that kind of thing. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's kind of isolated since he quit driving because he's not able to drive anymore. But he comes down to our meal site mm -hmm. well, where I volunteer, <laughs> and uh, this is how we've gotten to know him. Very well. And well, so you know, 
Well, everything so that you do for a veteran. Any way we can, but we don't want to get involved in his financial matters. That's strongly suggested. Um, more you get involved in somebody's personal financial matters and or their own personal lives, the more it work, works against you. Right. Okay. But yeah. Well, we don't. We just want to. You know, we just want to help him, but not involved in his personal matters. But we'll take him to the doctor or anything like this. Well, our office you know? is open Monday through Friday, without any doubt, unless it's a legal holiday, of course. But uh, we're in there from 8 a.m. in the mornings to five, uh, three o'clock in the afternoons right now. Okay. Okay. Well. Like I say, they're going to lunch before the orientation meeting this afternoon. That'll be fine. I'll mention it to my husband before he leaves. Yes, please do. Okay, okay thank you so thank much. Thank you. Okay, we don't have any more phone calls okay. in, so. Okay. Dr. Neff, you're going to be introducing another young lady to us before here in just a minute? Well, I'm going to uh, reintroduce uh, Dr. Charla Geary, who's our pharmacist, and we ask our pharmacist to come to uh, speak to us about hypertension, uh, discuss uh, what the VA has to offer, because she runs our hypertension classes, our blood pressure classes. So, uh, Which a lot of us are in that category, aren't we? including myself. The, the scope of the problem is, uh, since the mean age of the veterans we see is roughly 68 to 72, in that age group in our country, about 50% of individuals have hypertension. So it's something that affects probably sitting around this table and guessing the age of uh, the men around here, probably the majority of us have hypertension. Yes. So it's a pretty common. Well, let me start, uh, uh, Dr. Gary. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about what the VA has to offer and about your uh, blood pressure class that you have at the clinic? Yes, good morning. Um, at the VA, we have hypertension classes um, that we usually receive patient consults from the